This is the Doubles Only Tennis Podcast, where you learn the best tips and strategies in the world to help you become a smarter, more effective tennis player. You'll hear interviews with pro tour doubles players and coaches, including easy to use lessons to improve your game and win more matches. My name is Will Bocek, founder of the Tennis Tribe, doubles strategy coach, and host of the show. Today, I'm going to talk about three doubles lessons from 2022 that I've learned that I feel like have helped my doubles game personally. And I want to try to illustrate them in a way that you can implement them into your own game going into next year, into 2023. So uh, I'm going to go through um, a lesson on volleys, a lesson on training, and then a lesson on practice. And before I get into all that, uh, I have three quick announcements. Uh, Number one, we are expanding our shop. So uh, you probably, um, or a lot of you may not know uh, that we do have a shop at the Tennis Tribe and we sell Watch More Doubles t-shirts. So if you go to the thetennistribe.com uh, at the top right or on your phone, you'll see in the menu, um, there's a link to our shop and we're going to create some more uh, merchandise, some branded merchandise, uh, as well as some I Heart Doubles uh, t-shirts and merchandise. So if you've ever seen the I Heart New York logo, it's, it's going to be similar to that to kind of show off your love of doubles. So um, if you use coupon code TRIBE, you can get a discount on uh, your order at the shop. And um, if you order soon, you should be able to get it uh, before Christmas, I believe. Um, when you check out, you'll be able to see uh, what the shipping estimates are right now. So um, we're expanding the shop. The second thing is uh, the ebooks are on sale through the end of the month. So um, I have two ebooks. One is 25 Winning Doubles Tactics, which includes uh, my 25 personal favorite tactics that I use on the doubles court. Uh, it talks about how to execute them, uh, the best scenarios to use them, and then also why they work. Uh, and then another ebook on serve strategy for doubles includes everything that I know about serve strategy. It's Um, over 50 pages, actually. So it's a very in-depth book on serve strategy. Uh, And you can find that at thetennistribe.com. Under double strategy, you'll see a link to our uh, products page where I'll be adding more eBooks and uh, hopefully some courses as well uh, in 2023. Uh, And then the last announcement, I may take the week off of the 28th um, for the podcast. So you may not hear from me the week of the 28th depends on if I get another interview for um, for that week. Uh, next week, we're going to have on a top 20 WTA doubles player. Um, so I'm really excited for that one. It's a, a brand new guest, so definitely look out for that. But the week of the 28th, we may skip a week on the podcast and then come back to you uh, in January 2023 leading up to Australia. So Um, Those are the announcements. Uh, Let's dive in to today's lessons. So the first lesson that I feel like helped me the most in 2022 is a very simple one. Uh, And it's something that I implemented early in the year and I got better and better at it throughout the year. Uh, And that is to volley across your body. So I'll talk about more what that means, but it's something I've talked a little bit about already on the podcast. And Um, This started in fall of 2021. I was at TCU watching a a pro women's ITF tournament, and I was watching some doubles with Peter Lebedevs, who is the uh, tournament director for the Dallas Open. We've had him on the podcast before, and I'm sure we'll do an episode next month uh, leading up to that tournament. And there was a point that was played in the ad court. So Um, there's this girl at the net, her partner's serving. Um, She's at the ad court, kind of staring down the line at the returner. Her partner hits a serve. She kind of moves towards the middle and has a backhand volley. And she tries to hit that backhand volley inside out uh, between the opponents. So um, I think the serve was wide. So the returner was kind of off the court. 
uh, and then the other net player was up, or the other um, opponent was up at the net. So she tries to hit that backhand volley between the opponents, which is what a lot of coaches teach. Um, a lot of coaches will also teach you to hit it uh, straight at the net player because they don't have a lot of time. Um, and what happened was she missed it long. So she hits that backhand volley, it sails long, and Peter asked me, uh, what, what did she do wrong there? And I think I had some kind of technical explanation, like she didn't get her feet around enough, or she should have um, gone at the net player. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but um, whatever I said was incorrect. Uh, Peter said um, she should have just taken that back cross court uh, and gone with a short angle. And I thought about that and started trying to implement it in a few matches after that. And it is so much easier to hit that volley cross court than it is inside out, either at the net player or uh, between the opponents um, through the middle of the court. Uh, And I've started doing that more and more throughout this year. uh, And I've gotten better at it. And I win a lot more points on it and I miss a lot fewer volleys. Um, So think about that when you're out there. Um, if, especially, you know, if you're in the deuce court, you're moving to your right and for a right-handed player, it's a forehand volley. Uh, if you're in the ad court moving to your left and that volley's in the middle, it's a backhand volley. Uh, think about practicing that one, um, with a short kind of drop shot angle volley. And what's going to happen is you'll miss a lot, uh, a lot fewer of them. And the opponent who's returning or maybe on a cross court rally is not going to be able to get up to that ball. Um, So it's going to end up being kind of a drop shot winner or an angle winner. Um, And if they can get up to it, it's going to be a very defensive shot. So it's just a much, much easier volley to hit across your body than it is inside out. Um, When I was in Montreal, I was watching Wesley Kuhlhoff, and he was doing the same thing. He was practicing his reaction volleys, and his coach was just drilling balls at him, just one after the other, after the other, after the other. And his and they had some sticks laid out um, kind of on the s- single sidelines in the service box. Uh, and he was hitting his forehand volleys across his body to the left, his backhand volleys across his body to the right, um, and just practicing putting those away. Uh, and really, it, it just makes it, again, <laughs> I can't stress it enough, it makes it a much easier volley. So when you're out there playing, Uh, If you miss a volley, think about why you missed it and think about if you should have maybe gone uh, across your body instead of trying to hit a more difficult inside out shot um, on that. It's it's definitely helped my game a lot in 2022. So this next lesson uh, does require a bit of a disclaimer. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about strength training and and just my story and what's worked for me, especially the last few months. Uh, But If you have an injury or uh, anything like that, definitely talk to your doctor. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not certified in any sort of strength training, uh, and I'm not giving any medical advice here. Um, This is just my story that uh, maybe you can take and and talk with your trainer or talk with your doctor uh, about. So um, the the real takeaway or the real lesson is is strength training is important and it works. Uh, There's a podcast I've started listening to a lot this year uh, called The Drive by Peter Atia, and he talks about how strength training is so important for longevity and all these things, and he convinced me to finally start getting into the gym a little bit more regularly. And throughout this year, and especially this summer, um, I was having issues with with golfer's elbow. So it was like on the inside of my elbow, uh, and it especially would hurt on my serve. Now, once I got into the match, it would kind of go numb and go away. But then after the match, it would kill me. And then starting out, um, kind of warming up, it would really hurt a lot when I made contact on my serve. And what I've done is um, since probably October uh, or maybe mid-September, I've started going to the gym twice a week for 45 minutes, so not for that long. And I've started using that pulley system. So Um, You can clip on different things like a a tricep extension thing or um, there's all sorts of different tools you can clip onto the little carabiner at the end. And uh, I just do a a handle and use that pulley system. And all I do is I adjust the height of it um, just to create some variety. And I've started hitting forehands, backhands, and serves with it. Um, And what I mean by that is... Uh, I'll move the height down to 
let's say my waist, sometimes I'll go as low as my knees, uh, and I'll stand perpendicular to it and hold the handle out to my right and just swing across my body kind of slowly. You know, I'm not swinging as hard as I would on a forehand because there's weight behind it and a lot of resistance, but I swing it across my body and I can feel it working my arm, my core, um, and I'm turning as if I'm hitting a forehand. And then I'll do the same thing with my left hand and turn as if I'm hitting a backhand. Uh, and it's strengthened my, my elbows, my shoulders, uh, my core, and I've really noticed it on the court. So when I get into cross-court rallies, uh, I'm able to put a little bit less effort, um, or at least it feels more effortless to, to hit my forehand or to hit my backhand with a good amount of pace. Uh, and most importantly for me, it's gotten rid of a lot of the pain in my golfer's elbow. Uh, and I, I can do the same thing um, with that pulley system on the serve. So if you raise it up to maybe your shoulder height or something like that, and you can turn away from it and just grab that handle and create kind of a, a 90 degree um, angle with your arm, you can grab that handle and kind of throw it up and then come back and then throw it up and create kind of mimic that serving motion. Uh, and it's added a little bit of pace to my serve as well. So um, that's something I just wanted to share. Uh, again, if you're injured or something like that, talk to your doctor. Um, I'm not a doctor and I'm not giving medical advice, but I wanted to share that story. Um, and hopefully it motivates a few of you to um, start doing some strength training because I really think even that alone without um, playing more tennis can help your game because uh, it's definitely helped mine the past few weeks. And one last note on that. Um, for years I've had trouble going to the gym consistently. Uh, and I know it's something that a lot of people struggle with and I'm kind of getting off track here from tennis, but I think this is helpful. Um, so I saw an Nadal quote recently and he talked about, um, putting in the effort and, uh, the most important, my takeaway from it kind of was the most important time to, to go to practice or to go to the gym is the time you least want to. And that kind of flipped my mindset on going to the gym. So um, there's definitely a lot of days, like probably after this episode, I'm going to go over there. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of days where I'm like tired and groggy and feeling lazy and not wanting to do it. And because of that, that quote and how it kind of flipped my mindset, when I'm having a day like that, I've changed the way I think about it to, um, I've changed it from... I'm too tired. I'll just go tomorrow to this is the most important day for me to go because I'm not that interested in going. And if I can go today, then it'll make going all the other times easier. And it's helped me develop the habit. I've, I've been going pretty consistently twice a week for the last three months, which is um, probably the best I've done uh, in my life to this point. So hopefully that helps some of you. Um, this next lesson, we will get uh, back to tennis. So the third lesson that I learned in 2022 that I feel like has helped me a lot is practicing your secondary patterns. And by secondary patterns, I mean shots or tactics or plays that you're not going to use the majority of the time. You might go two, three, four uh, games, sometimes even more without using some of these shots. Uh, the first one, um, and I have three here for you. The first one is simply hitting down the line. So in the past... I never practiced hitting down the line unless I was playing a match. So whether it be a cross-court rally or a second serve return, um, I would hit down the line a handful of times per set or per match, uh, but I never practiced it off of the match court. Um, sometimes I would play practice matches, but again, that's kind of a match court scenario. So uh, this year, the past six months especially, I've started practicing hitting it down the line more often. Uh, the other shot that I practiced a lot, and these two are kind of related, and I'll talk about a drill here in a second uh, that I use to practice both of these, is the inside-out forehand from the ad court that uh, I like to roll and kind of dip cross-court for a short angle. Um, it's a very effective shot, especially if both players get to the net and I have a short forehand. In the past, I would hit probably 95% of my forehands through the middle of the court. And every now and then I might take a forehand inside in from the ad court and go down the line. Uh, but for the most part, I would go through the middle. But now I've developed this kind of short 
cross court angle. Uh, that's a great shot. It's to a right handed player's backhand volley. Um, and it helps if I can make it once or twice, it helps kind of spread them out because that player cross court for me has to start looking for that ball and respecting that shot. And it opens up the middle a little bit more. So the drill I started using to practice this is super simple. Um, you can do this with your coach if you take private lessons or uh, if you're a member at a, a member at a club or uh, play at a tennis center, um, just get a hitting partner. And if y'all can get a basket of balls um, from the tennis center or from the club, you can feed to each other. And what I did is had uh, my partner feed with a basket of balls from the ad court kind of return position cross court to me. Uh, and I just had him use some variety, hit some balls with pace. So I would have to practice defending hit some balls um, with good depth, give me some short balls, and I would kind of move around as if I was kind of rallying in the ad court. And I set up some targets on the other side of the net. So I set up a target down the line. I set up a target deep through the middle of the court. And then I set up a target um, short kind of cross court angle for that inside out short ball. Uh, and I would practice hitting all of those depending on the ball that was fed to me. And it's really important to use variety here. Um, Warren Pretorius, who I've talked about on the podcast, he's uh, the founder of Tennis Analytics. Um, he has a coaching certification course where he talks about uh, motor learning. And one of the problems that a lot of coaches run into, and it affects us as players, is when they're teaching, um, let's say, a down-the-line backhand from the ad court, for example, uh, they'll have you hit you know, 25 or 50 down the line backhands in a row. But there's studies that have shown that's less effective than hitting a down the line backhand, then a run around forehand, then maybe a cross court backhand, and then going back to that down the line backhand. Uh, if you're just hitting the same shot over and over again, you're not going to be able to emulate that on a match court as effectively. Uh, and the other thing about that is, in a match, you're not going to be hitting down the line backhands over and over and over again. So um, it doesn't really emulate a real match situation. So uh, that's a really good drill you can do to practice not only your normal kind of cross court uh, rallying, but also every now and then when you get the right ball, you can go down the line or you can hit that short cross court angle um, or you can try to rip one through the middle. Uh, so practicing some of those secondary patterns is super effective. The other one that I used is the lob. Um, so practicing the offensive lob and the lob return is something that, uh, again, I had only done in matches, and I started to do it in practice a little bit more this year, and it's improved my make percentage and win percentage on um, all three of those shots, really. So uh, I also have a, a podcast on um, a podcast episode on how to lob. Uh, that goes into more depth um, that I'll link to in the show notes as well. So um, that's it for this episode. Hopefully these three lessons have helped you and you can take away some of this uh, going into 2023 and improve your game. Uh, I will uh, chat with you next week when um, I'll have an interview with a, like I said, a top 20 WTA doubles player. So I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, after that, I will talk to you in 2023. So thank you all for listening and have a good rest of your week. If you're a doubles player, you'll love our weekly strategy newsletter. Every Thursday, I send you my best doubles tips, tactics, and strategies that you can use in your very next match. And when you sign up, I'll also send you a free 20-page ebook that has my favorite doubles tactics for forcing errors and getting more easy volleys at the net. Go to thetennistribe.com slash newsletter to sign up now.